most people when they hear petroleum, the first thing that comes to mind is energy. The other things um, that are uh, products that comes out of petroleum, we talk about uh, fertilizers, plastics, and other components, they are all there. With me today on the show is Dr. Omonigo B. Otanocha. He is a registered engineer with a PhD in mechanical engineering and he is the current CEO of Fupre Energy Solutions Limited. Tell me about Fupre Energy Solutions Limited. Thank you very much, my interviewer. My name is Omonigo Otanocha. Fupre Energy Solutions Nigeria Limited was registered as a corporate entity in 2016, December. It's a private entity registered under the federal government of Nigeria. A spin-off coming from the University of, uh, Federal University of Petroleum Resources, and then we have a foreign counterpart, which is a FUPRI uh, for the iFlow Energy UK Limited. So both companies came together and formed the FUPRI Energy Solution Maya Limited. This is a direct response to the, as a then, envisaged FUPRI Act to respond real time to oil and gas uh, industry and also the energy sector by providing um, capacity building and uh, competency training for students and uh, trainees in terms of continuous professional development in the oil and gas industry and allied sector. That's how FUPRI Energy came to being and as we speak it's uh, 10 million shares and it's like the operative and business arm of the university in actualizing uh, the, the FUPRI Act. That's now a bill, uh, that's now um, have been signed into law by the president of this country, President Muhammad Buhari. Why was this established? Uh, like I said, it was established to bring uh, industry, uh, academia, okay. and uh, uh, industry, professional bodies, academia, and also the government together, a kind of tripod. That's industry, you have industry in one, in one corner. You have the academia, also the professional bodies like uh, NIMECI, National Koran, uh, uh, NSC, together on one part. And then the third one is um, government, so that we can have wholesome training for the energy sector and also the oil and gas sector and also other allied sectors. We're not restricted to just the oil and gas and energy sector. Or anything that has to do with local content development in this country to boost up uh, the students that are going through FUBRI and also others that will engage in industry so that they can be better productive and then Nigeria can achieve our aims and objectives in these sectors. What is the benefit of this organization to the society? Oh, wonderful. Like I said, our target is um, competency training, not just certification and giving you a, a paper. Uh, the oil and gas does not look at your degree, they look at what you can do and there is a skill gap in this country. Uh, most of our graduates say they are half-baked, they are not able to respond real-time to industry. They get into industry and they, are, they have to be retrained. So that gap, we need to fill that gap and also define uh, moving forward how students should be trained. Uh, so that's, our, that's the main objective, is to capacity building, local content development, and also trying to make sure that we have uh, uh, trainees who are world standard. So whoever is certified in FUPRI, uh, through FUPRI uh, Energy, they should be able to meet up to the standard and perform effectively well. Uh, most people believe the world is shifting away from the oil and gas sector. There are electric vehicles, solar panels. So why still prepare people and the society for a future that might not exist? I might be wrong. What do you think? What do you have to say about this? Okay. Uh... Uh, these are, uh, in the public domain, this debate is ongoing, especially when um, FUPRI staff have been asking the question, what's the relevance of FUPRI, Federal Reserve of Petroleum Resources? Uh, since petroleum is captured there, and the world is going uh, for that. Now, interestingly, I won't say whether you're wrong or you're right, but I will marshal out my point. My point is, uh, as several uh, erudite scholars okay. and practitioners in the field, people like Professor Babs, or Yenei, I've spoken so much about this, a uh, fellow of the Academy of Science. Uh, in the last lecture series, 2019 uh, lecture series in Abuja, he spoke extensively on this. And then his uh, professorial uh, inaugural lecture at the University of uh, uh, Aberdeen, uh, what do you call it now? Yes, University of Aberdeen, uh, Robert Gordon, University of Aberdeen. He did uh, a, a wholesome uh, analysis of this. So, Moving forward, everything I say about you is oil and gas, it's crude oil, 
your clothing, the energy that's, that's been put into it, the plastics that are out of it. It might interest you to know that uh, petroleum, petroleum, that word petroleum, has over 2,000 products. Okay. Uh, well, most people, when they hear petroleum, the first thing that comes to mind is energy. The other things um, that are uh, products that come out of uh, petroleum, we talk about uh, fertilizers, plastics, and other components, they are all there. In Nigeria currently, it's mostly used for energy. Have you heard, have you heard about petrochemicals? Yes, I've heard. So when you say mostly used for energy, are you, are you, are you, are you, are you about, sure? I'm talking about fuel, fuel and gas yeah. from petroleum. Yeah, you're looking at just the, the, the energy part of it. How about fertilizer? Have you heard about uh, ASCOM? Have you heard about uh, petrochemicals? These are all... Um, uh, outputs, petrochemicals like plastics, your capsules that you see and all that, all that stuff, your clothing, how they, in terms of energy too, how, how they produce. You did mention renewables. Yes, it's nice, but again, how many of the renewables have you seen that are 100%? Let's consider the, the most popular one is um, solar panels. Yes. Now, there's all called life cycle analysis. If you do an after analysis of how these are, uh, the, the popular ones are silicon, silicon based. So have you considered how the sun, the silicon is mined, the energy inputs, how much of solar energy is used in the mining of silicon, then the processing before you now have the solar panels. Then what about the end of life, how they are processed, how much of solar energy it's used for that. So when you're doing life cycle analysis, you might, you might have everything. In Germany, Germany is one of the best in renewable energies, but the best, if you will, if you will, there's still a lot of research, so nobody should shoot down renewable energies. In fact, the oil and gas industries are going into renewable energies. And my interest you that Fupri, even though it's a petroleum university, got a grant from the Royal Academy of Engineering to the tune of 140,000 uh, British pounds to conduct uh, research in uh, renewable energy in terms of uh, biogas for off-grid power and energy, for energy and off-grid power, because uh, it's a challenge in the country. So as engineers, as uh, scientists, as um, uh, development protagonists, we must respond to the current needs of the society. So as I speak now, the Royal Academy of Engineering in the UK, United Kingdom, has granted this university as a hub university. There's a hope and there's a spoke uh, for two years between November 2018 to 2020 to run a, project, a national project on biogas for energy and off-grid power. So they all intertwined. It might also interest you that the NMPC is transforming. Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, they are transforming to become an energy co company instead of just petroleum. Okay, so um, a lot of uh, work still needs to be done, but again, there are so many attributes to petroleum, just to re-emphasize, that uh, are out there. And all we need to do is to look at cleaner production. You talked about electric vehicles. How are you going to generate the electricity for the vehicles to, to tap into? Most, most people <laughs> I know who are buying electric vehicles, they buy solar, solar panels and power. Mm -hmm. So they charge their vehicles, their electric vehicles from renewable energy. Okay, Absolutely. most people in Nigeria. Okay, let's give you an instance. We have a solar farm in, in uh, Fupri. Are you aware? Yes, I'm aware. It's 500 kVA. Okay. And um, there are two generators there. Two of them. Each of them is of 400 kVA each. Why, why generators? I, I used to think the yeah, solar yeah. panel. Just yeah, you're still thinking. Anyway, okay. I'm telling you reality on the ground now. Okay. It's not every time you have uh, solar, uh, the, the, the illumination from the sun. It's not every time you have that kind of, uh, you have constant um, uh, 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 sun, sunshine to okay, generate. The generator is here just in case there's no much sunshine. Yeah, so because they use batteries. The, okay. the, the, the solar Charges cells, the batteries. yeah, 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 inverters and everything, and then they now use to power the entire university because our current load is less than 400 kVA. Uh, current loading full brain. So that is just position. So what I think engineers and what engineers are doing now, especially in the advanced world, is cleaner production of, of power and electricity. They now use electricity to charge your vehicles. Like uh, I, w I worked on the UK 
There's a project in the UK when I was in Manchester, uh, when I taught in undergraduate and postgraduate there, under the, um, the interdisciplinary and sustainable development uh, uh, course. I was a teaching assistant. The, we did do a project on shaving the peaks. Okay. okay, shaving the peaks. So you know what it means for you to just plug this electric kettle, just plug it on. What happens to the grid, especially uh, at peak periods, between seven, six, seven, eight, nine. In just one kettle plugged on, it causes a spike. Then multiply that by multiple people who will be coming home and they need a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, it spikes it. Then now consider loading the grids again with electric vehicles to charge. And then also the demand time too. And then if you look again, I go back again, um, life cycle analysis, the, the footprint, the carbon footprint for the generation of that electricity. When, when you speak about life cycle analysis, are you trying to say the solar panel has its own life cycle? At oh, everything has a life cycle. So, so when I say that, from cradle, the, from cradle to death. After the lifespan of the, of the you, you need to dispose it. You need to change it. Okay. Yeah, you, you dispose it, it's going to end up somewhere. Okay. Yeah, so you need, you, as, uh, if you pick up something, you should be responsible for its disposal. So, so when you do what they call cradle to death analysis, which is life cycle analysis, then you find out that there are so many other um, alternatives, but currently technology is working out to see how they can use to sustain uh, production. But again, this is domestic. If you go to industrial production, currently the current machineries are still drunk on diesel because of its effective use in production. So when you talk about production, large scale production, the world is still drunk on what? On diesel. They are still addicted to fossil fuel. Okay, there, is, there are synthetic uh, products that are already going on. There are biodiesel too, but again, they, they, they so-called blend. They blend them with fossil fuel to reduce the emissions. And so that's why I said, what the world is looking at is cleaner production of electricity. You mentioned other things petroleum could be used for. Um, I believe this would be the sole use of petroleum in the near future. We talked, petroleum could be used for the buttons of our sheds, could be used for plastics. plastics yeah. So do you provide courses related to all you have said? Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer. I was to see how we could uh, uh, automate and uh, mechanize uh, the production process and other uh, ancillary um, um, outline. Yes, that's where we do um, um, engineers in society. There's a course in, in mechanical engineering called engineers in society. I'm referring we, to footprint energy yeah. solution. Well, footprint, yeah, we have a lot of uh, courses. That yeah, we have courses in that direction. We have sustainable development uh, courses, interdisciplinary uh, sustainable development uh, courses. Again. We don't just do courses because we have to do courses. We do courses because they should be relevant in the oil and gas industry. I hope you are aware that Total, as we speak now, even Shell, they have a renewable department. NNPC has what they call RED, Renewable Energy Department, division, headed by a high-level personnel and everything. So we, we, we are client-oriented. The idea is that you, you don't just train you and you remain docile. We're not just into capacity building. We're also, also, also uh, capacity uh, utilization. That's why I mentioned that word gap. When you do a skilled gap analysis, you find out that, okay, this is what they need in the oil and gas industry. This is what you need to be effective in, in functioning effectively. So these are the courses we tell all most of our courses to. The courses offered are meant for which category of person? We have experienced, which is advanced level. We have uh, intermediate, for those who have some basic knowledge, either theoretical. You know, we can have do some competent. Then we also have the um, the the low cadre, those who don't have uh, school sad or those who do not go to school at all. Uh, we have some trade skill. We have we have. I'll give you our um, a broker. here. We cater for everybody because the oil and gas industry does not operate in vacuum. They operate in communities, so they need to take off um, different cadre of personalities there. So that very uh, artisan training. We have a lot of artisan training. Uh, to take care of community well-being and then we have uh, intermediate to upgrade skills also or to take care of those who have skills mismatch. For example, you, you are a physicist and you have skills in say let's say modeling but your models are just maybe for animation. We could train you to become a modeler to design industry games and then you know so when it's a skills mismatch you are studying mechanical engineering where the industry needs somebody who's a production engineer 
So you have your, you already have mismatch. So we need to upgrade you so that you could uh, respond real time to what the industry need. Uh, which means right. someone from the art department could come and take courses from Fopre Solution Limited. Of course, anybody. Okay. Yeah, that's why we have different uh, KEDA. Uh, okay. So we have a blend of both uh, classroom. It's called blended learning. 70% in the field, 30% in the classroom, so that you can have some basic theoretical knowledge of what you're doing. And these courses can be found on your website? Yes, some of, most, of, some, most of them on the website. Others can be bespoke, that means that uh, it's uh, tailored towards the need of that particular um, uh, client. Mm. I was going through your website and some of the courses, 400,000, 350,000, 300,000. Can the average man in Nigeria afford this? Okay, um, interestingly, uh, you should also talk about the timeline too. So most of those courses are residential and they are seven days a week. Seven days a week. So uh, currently, because we are new entrants to the market, our, uh, our fees are, very, are, are reasonably very cheap. They should be about the cheapest in the market because we are coming in. And the other point again is that we have established um, um, facilitators or instructors, staff of FUPRI. So they are not being paid extra salary, they are being paid honorarium. So that reduces the cost a lot. Don't forget, most of these courses are domiciliated in dollars, okay. international rate. So if you see 400000 then that's just $1,000. Some of those courses, they run for $5,000 abroad. Okay. But we are coming to the market and again, uh, we need to establish our competencies. Okay. Yeah. So they are relatively cheap if you do a comparative analysis. There are a lot of courses. Where can someone start from? It depends on your interest. Currently, the, um, the oil and gas industry they have what they call uh, areas of interest, where they have where they have last skills, where they bring people from abroad. And because uh, the FUPRI Act is very specific that uh, uh, FUPRI should train people, it's established to train people for the oil and gas and energy sector to the highest level. So that uh, was the basis behind our formulation of those courses. For somebody who is already working, or, or a fresh graduate from the university, let's assume you read mechanical engineering, there's nothing st stopping you for being trained to be an instrumentation engineer, so I can function effectively in some assigned roles in say Chevron or Seplat or Shell, or any of these uh, JVs or IOCs, international oil, oil, oil companies. So it depends on where you, where you are, who can bring you up to speed. Like, we have what they call industry games, oil and gas industry games, petroleum industry games. Anybody can take that course, as long as you can understand. It's all in a computer. Even kids, it's designed for kids to understand how the oil and gas industry operates, preparing them for the future. Yeah. So it depends on whatever level you are. And we have office here in Fupri. In, uh, under the vice chancellor's office, and then we have uh, another base at uh, the MPDC in the Western uh, um, Estate at Ejeba, uh, formerly called SITP, uh, Shell Estate Ejeba, where we do most of our training, and then we take them to the field to with those whom we have partnership with, uh, who have operating operational fields going on. Yes, Fupri Energy Solution is based in Delta State. Someone who is from Abuja, how can such a person participate in the course? Does Fuku Energy Solution provide accommodation for people outside the Delta State? Of course, we do that. We do, we do provide so, accommodation. Is it also in the fee? It yeah, that, like I said, I said residential. Okay. <laughs> so if I apply for the course, I get accommodation from Fuku Energy uh, yeah, Solutions? Yeah, because the idea is that that's why we went after the facility at Shell Ejeva. So that both the training, trainers, everybody are in one facility, all the encumbrance about transportation, uh, traffic, everything is cut off. And the facility there is 24 hours, 7 uh, power supply. You mentioned about Abuja. As you speak now, we have gone to train people in Lagos. Okay. Yeah, we, could, we have, we have, we have, yeah, we have facility, we, we, we use hotels. Okay. So all those ones are beautiful. It depends on the client's, again, requirements. If a client says, look, I have eight people, I want to pull them off their jobs. Okay. Like Chevron, we did something for Chevron recently from uh, our other wing, which is the Fupri Consult Limited. Uh, they pulled out experienced people between five and ten years uh, in oil and gas operations, Chevron. 
and uh, they gave us they gave us a facility in in, in, in Lekki. We went there to train them. Currently, there, there is so much unemployment in our society. What is the guarantee that someone who takes this course or take any of the courses from your website would get employment immediately? Okay, first of all, we don't guarantee because uh, ours we, we can't take the job of guaranteeing. But again, we did say that uh, our courses are tailored towards the needs of the oil and gas industry. So, uh, almost, not almost, a hundred, we've got a hundred percent so far, though it's not that much, our records were new, we just got registered to 216, but so far it's a hundred percent. Again, most of the people who are trained are in, in the oil and gas industry, so we make them more effective. So the guarantee is that if you successfully go through the program and you, are, you have a competency certification, it, it means that you, uh, you, are ready. you are ready for any role. Most of the roles in the oil and gas industry are strained. While going through your website, I saw one benefit of using Fupre Energy Solution Limited is to train rather than teach. Yes. What does this mean? Okay, uh, the easiest way I describe teaching is uh, I, am, I, I know everything. I'm the lecturer, I have a PhD, and you are the student. Open your mouth, I put things in, bring it back the way I gave it to you. Okay. You regurgitate knowledge. But uh, in training, we go the problem-based learning way, PBL. Problem-based learning, there's a problem, we put the problem on the table, you have a machine on the table, can you recouple it? And everything, and why, is it, why does it work like this? So our emphasis is on 70% in the field, where is the, re the real world, and then 30% in the class to prepare you for the field. So training is a, is a uh, lifelong training. What you train on, if I ask you what's your name, you easily tell me. Do you remember to tell me your name? Do you have to recall? No. Because you have been trained to know your name. But when you are taught in class, often times, you, you study it again to recall, and then you give it out the way it is. When you get involved, you remember more. So what we do is I will create an enabling environment for learning. That's the emphasis, and that's the training. Propre Energy Solution Limited is committed to community well-being. How do you accomplish this? Is there an arm of Fupre Energy Solution Limited that focuses on giving back to the society? Oh, like you said, like you said, yes, corporate social responsibility. Like I mentioned, all the oil, oil and gas companies, they don't operate in vacuum, they operate in communities. And there are various uh, personalities in that community. There are those who are learning and are those who are uh, not as learning as the, the professionals. So once the community well-being, every aspect of the community that we, that we bring about the successful operation of those companies are considered. So when you hear about youth restiveness, uh, data in Nigeria shows that over 65% of uh, most communities are youths below 25 years. Okay. You must think about what their needs are so that when you take care of that need, it will not have an adverse effect on the operations of, of your of your core mandate in such communities. So that's community well-being. So if you have youth restiveness, what can they do? Can they go into bricks making? If they do go into bricks making, who buys the bricks? Okay, if they are welders, where will they be employed? Do you have needs for them in that? If they don't have needs for them in the current community, can you connect them to where they can have? So if they are fully engaged, they will not have the energy to commit havoc. So that's what we mean by community well-being. We take into cognizance the needs of the community while advising clients uh, on training needs. And again, it's not just training we do, we also do consultancy. Okay. Okay. There's an arm responsible for this. Yeah, there are, depends, depending on the client's uh, uh, requirement. Like I said, almost every staff in Fulbright and even students who are competent are resource persons for full pre energy, okay. meaning that um, if we want to train people in guidance and counseling, of course, Dr. Mr. Kucha should be one of the people that will lead that team because they already have an established unit in full pre, and then they'll be remunerated. They'll be given a, a, a due um, uh, remuneration for for the activity in full pre energy. So full pre energy relies first and foremost on the personnel and the capacity in full pre to live up to its mandate. Remember there's an act establishing Fulbright and there are specific terms there of what we should do. Fulbright energy is the operational uh, uh, aspect of that act, bringing into life.
of what Fupri Act uh, dictates for Fupri, yes. Okay. What does the future hold for Fupri Energy Solution Limited? Yeah, uh, Fupri Energy Solution Limited is currently is a global company already and the idea is to play among the, the global companies. As we speak now, interestingly, I also double as, as, as a member of the governing council of Fupri. Uh, I was elected in to represent congregation as an academic um, April 1st, 2019. And uh, in the last council meeting that we had this uh, month of July, uh, I made a proposal to the um, governing council to go after marginal fields. As an investor, marginal field, brown field, product, productive field, oil wells around here, so that we can um, practically take our students there and also possibly create employment for them and also generate uh, revenue that can sustain our financial needs in Fupri. So for the future is big. We, we want to play at that level as an oil and gas company, not just training, as an oil and gas company providing real-time solutions and uh, services and products for the oil and gas uh, industry and then creating opportunities for our graduates okay and our trainees to be active in the oil and gas industry did you always plan to be a mechanical engineer so god be the glory i i went to government college Ugali and Ugali primary school i was an a student so okay. in government college we used to uh, they put in class because of uh, those of course science and technology took first so i was in a and uh, that was the pool they expected the doctors and the engineers to come from but again, I had very high uh, numerical acumen to go with the glory. And um, I also like my ideas coming to reality. And that's how I found myself in, uh, in mechanical engineering. And I'm happy. I, I started with production engineering in Uniben. And then I read the uh, master's was manufacturing and then mechanical engineering for PhD. But again, my, my, my passion is in advanced manufacturing. I'm basically a laser engineer using lasers to fabricate, to produce products. So I like reality, having the concept in my head and then bringing it to real and tangible terms. But the most interesting part is seeing the impact, how people um, um, appreciate the value of uh, what you bring up. So that's the motivation. Uh, and that's, that what sustains me when I wake up every day and when I go to bed at night. The question is, what problem have I solved? And uh, what uh, impact have I made that is positive? How have I, um, even though it's one notch, prepared the future for my kids that are growing up? Okay. And also, uh, how do I have a more sustainable world uh, to this? So these are the, the driving force, and that has always prepared me. Uh, maybe that's what also made the Royal Academy uh, shown interest in FUPRE, um, and also giving us that grant that will manage uh, for uh, energy and upgrade grid power. So that's basically, yeah, my motivation and if I have opportunity, though I believe that once a man dies, he faces God and the eternity. Uh, I, I love being a mechanical engineer. Okay. Yeah. What, what challenges do you face in your career? Uh, most of them is uh, the, f the first challenge was that I, the environment. Oftentimes uh, our environment in Nigeria here is challenging, appreciating creativity. Uh, there's a lot of uh, mediocrity. People uh, prefer to, so the, the environment to try. So I learned to create my environment. So rather than talking about how the environment uh, lowered me, I learned to create my environment. I have a meta, meta understanding of my environment and I try to create it. So, uh, and the way I phrase that is that um, head in the skies and boots on ground. So whatever ideas I have, I make sure they, they, they are realized. So that's what drives me and everything. For you and your career, what does the future hold? For you to be a leader, you must create other leaders. Okay. So what the future holds for me is I've seen those who I've interacted with, those who have had the opportunity of impacting their lives, do better than me. Uh, and creating that environment is what I'm uh, most interested in. And uh, be that as it may, I, I, I think, I think globally with local solutions. So the future, the future I, I envisage for myself is being active in the UN and the World Bank in, uh, in bringing to reality impactful projects that will better the lives of communities.
in Nigeria using STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Okay, and add innovations to it. So I leave out um, the reality of what I think it should be. So that's the future I think of. Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to say? For me, I believe that every, every, everything about my life is a testimony. And I just thank God for the reality of who I am as someone who is living out my name. And uh, with all humility, praying and uh, seeing the best in others. So my philosophy of life is um, live and let live. So, so if I am able to uh, uh, make you happier by interacting with you, or, or help you along your life's journey, uh, it gives me more fulfillment than tangible uh, material uh, things. So I just thank God for who I am and I pray I can uh, do more by drawing closer to Him and realizing all that He has gifted me with uh, to serve Him in humanity. Mm. How can people reach Fuku Energy Solution Limited? Okay, Fupri Energy Solution Limited, okay, Solution, we have a website uh, www.fupri, F U P R O E, then see dash energy, E N E R O G Y, then a dot, and then com. Also, we, are, we have an office at the administrative building of the Vice Chancellor's office, and then our operational office is at Chele Jeba, which is the uh, MPDC ND Western uh, Estate uh, at the Jeba, formerly the Special Intensive Training uh, Program site at Chele Jeba. We currently have about 29 bungalows there, and then uh, workshops. 15 of the bungalows are for accommodation. Each of the accommodation has about seven bedrooms. And so we have an office there uh, that we can be reached. But basically, by post and also interaction, it's uh, through the vice chancellor's office uh, at the uh, general admin. That would be all. I would like to thank you for being present for the show. OK. I want to thank you for choosing us. And uh, I pray that uh, those listening to us out there, there, there should be at least one or two persons that are motivated, and they can take the button and uh, uh, push forward. Nigeria has to be great. Uh, moving forward, that's my. Everybody can. Uh, anybody can pick up the niche, uh, take your niche in the society, and then see how you uh, through your sphere of influence, how you can better this country and better humanity. Humanity is one. Whether you're in Nigeria, or whether you're in, you're in the UK or in South Africa, humanity is one. So whatever betters humanity and it motivates you, may God sustain that dream, and we are here to support you at Fupri Energy, especially under my watch as the MD and CEO of Fupri Energy. Thank you so much. You're welcome.